Good day! It's quite sunny today, quite breezy though, and I have been thinking more about broad beans and decided this is where our overwintering broad beans will go this year in the turnip and beetroot bed. What that's also got me thinking is where the climbing beans will go next year. As you will remember, I did really long bean poles and put about five or six varieties of beans up those bean poles and then put bush beans at the edges. What I've decided next year, i.e. our current year for us, is that we're going to break those bean poles up a bit. So I might do four or five foot here of bean poles for one variety. And then I might do four or five feet here for another variety. And then I might do another variety in this bed and maybe another variety up here. But basically I'm going to split the climbing beans up. That's what I'm going to do. Or that's what I'm thinking of doing. I'd quite like to just have some different pockets. So instead of having a solid bed of one thing, like a solid bed of brassicas here, which to be fair does make sense. I might split things up a bit, like I did here where I had carrots here, parsnips here, turnips here, beetroot here. So yeah, I'm pondering that. I'm also thinking generally about beans next year because I think I'm only going to grow one variety of bush bean, no more than one. On the climbing bean side of things, I'll talk about that another day. Right, I'm going to carry on pondering my bean canes. Bye! I'm going to be carrying on with this bed today. I'm going to finish this one before I start the one over there. So now I'm going to get a jumbo bag to remove as much of this compost that's filling this bed as possible. The jumbo bag is now in place. Now to get my spade and start spading all of this into here. As I do that, I'm going to have a look through to make sure I'm not putting any sankfoil, bindweed or cooch grass roots back into this bag, which I will also do when emptying the bag. I've largely emptied that now. It's all in here, or a lot of it is in here. And this is why I'm doing that. I don't want these roots to survive. You see that, that bit of root here, I'm not sure if you can see, but there's, there's nothing in it. It's died. But further up here, it's still alive. So that bit will come back. Just threw it in my box. There's another bit there, look. Can you see that? That's well and truly alive, that one. Let's take that out. Another bit there out. And just throw it down there. Now, I'm going to fork this over. But before I do, I obviously want to make sure I put this bed back in the same place. So at each corner, there, over there, just behind here and here, I think you can just about see a bamboo. 
So that's my marker to, to know where I position this bed back again. But what I'm going to do now is just fork this over and then I'll tip this bed most probably that way. I'll most probably tip it over there because obviously I want access to here. Or do I? No, I don't need access to there because by the time this bed has been dug and cardboard put back down, the bed will then be back in place. So I might, in fact, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring this over this way. That's what I'm going to do. Things like that, roots. That has all been forked over really well. It's been forked over twice at least. Forked to about a foot's depth. Yes, I've disturbed worms, but fortunately there's really quite a few in there. So yeah, they'll be able to get going again as soon as I level this off and then put the cardboard on. Let me just bring you over to what I've taken out. These are all the deep roots I have taken out. So I think that was a worthwhile job. So that tray, as you saw last week, is the roots that came out really sort of from the layer of cardboard and above the cardboard I put on last year. And this layer not this layer, this set of roots is what was beneath the cardboard. So by taking these out and putting cardboard back on top, I'm again hoping to suppress perennial weeds to a longer extent than I would have done if I hadn't done this forking out job. So now I'm just going to level off that bed and then I'll be ready to put cardboard down. Just showing you this from the other angle. I've now raked the soil and also tamped it down with the end of the rake to make it flat. And that's where the frame is. And this cardboard that I have here is now going to be going down and butting up to the very edge. I don't want it to overlap in this instance. I want it to butt up to the edge. Yeah, getting on with that now. That's three layers of cardboard now down. I do describe this in more detail in uh, the series of videos when I was setting this plot up. So I'll put a link in here. You will notice I've come out from the edge at this point, tiny bit here and here. That's really just a practicality. I decided it'd be easier once this is wet to just cut it off and put it in the compost bin. So now, with three layers of compost, I'm going to give this cardboard a watering. It is actually raining now. I'm going to give it a watering because I want it damp when this goes back on. 
which I'm going to do shortly, fingers crossed, as long as it doesn't start raining too hard. Jumbo bag gone. Bed filled back up. It's at a very high level. If I come over here, and you can mostly see that's right at the edge, the top of the edging. If I come down to this side, you can see that bed is quite a bit lower. The reason being is this ground really needs to settle. I would say job done on this, but what I will need to do another day is just go through on my hands and knees at the side and go through this compost again. I do want to make sure there's virtually every bit of weed root out of there. As I was shoveling the compost back in, I saw some more weed roots and I took those out, but I want to go through it again. The good thing is any weed roots on the top here, as well as weeding through it in a day or so, when I actually plant up the garlic, I will be going in here and hopefully if I see any more that might have grown in that time, I'll take them, I'll be able to take them out. So yeah, really pleased with that. I'll cut this bit off another day. The fact it will be wet will be much easier, but I'm really pleased to have got that done. Obviously this one still needs to be done but that will wait for another day. Oh, somebody did email me actually um, about why I didn't sort out the mess, complete and utter mess, the person said, of my tomato bed. The reason being that tomato bed isn't going to have anything sown or planted in it until next year, where these beds are having garlic and onions in them and they're going to overwinter. So the reason I didn't do the complete and utter mess of my tomato bed was actually for a very good reason. And it, it, well, it did amuse me because I know this person goes on to another person's site and says, what a fantastic job that other YouTuber is doing. And I think that YouTuber hasn't done anything. But hey ho, each to their own. I'm really pleased to have got this job done. So what was that? Three hours work, I think. Plus obviously the work the other day. So really I need a good three hours, four hours to be able to sort this bed out, which I will find at some point. Okay, I'm gonna leave you now and see you very soon. Bye. Good day. I've just popped down to get some turnips and some beetroot for this evening. Whilst I did that, I thought I'd show you the beds that I've sorted, the garlic bed, which I sorted the other day that you'll have seen, and also the onion bed, which I sorted yesterday. Here we are, this bed I did the other day. This one I did yesterday morning before the rain came. And I'm really pleased to have got those two done. So that's the garlic bed here and the onion bed here. What I did do this morning, if I can just come in. Can you see I put chicken manure pellets down? I then watered them and we're due more rain so that will be really good to dissolve them and get their nutrients down into these two beds. I will be doing a soil test again in a few weeks. The Look at those sunflowers just remain amazing those. Um, I said I'd harvested some of the beetroot and the turnips. If I just bring you over, these are the beetroot on the left, no, beetroot on the right and turnips on the left. 
that are going to be going into an instant pot stew for us to have with rice this evening. Yum, absolutely yum. We will be using the beetroot leaves, though don't use the turnip leaves. We find them a bit too bitter, a bit too hairy as well. Oh, look, you see a little bee. Oh, it's just flown off. Little bee was there. So yeah, that's supper this evening or part of supper this evening. See you again tomorrow. Bye. Good day. I came down to water the polytunnel and noticed that the rain we've had is really beginning to split these tomatoes. So you can see a split here and a split here and that's happening on quite a few. So I think, no I don't think, I know I'm now going to pick these and others and in fact if I look at the plants they are beginning to look a bit tired. If I come here you can see that this leaf here is dying back. Now that's not blight that's just the leaf dying back as the plant dies back. But look, even so, there's still shoots coming on some of them. So what I'm going to do is take the ripe ones off and I'll be leaving the green ones because it won't do them any harm on there and I'll have another look at them in a few days time but I mean it is October I mean you know we shouldn't really well not we shouldn't really have tomatoes but by now these tomatoes are normally out either in the compost bin or in in municipal compost or in fact in a black bin so yeah I'll be doing some harvesting oh let me just show you one other thing that excited me when I got here. This cosmos is still going, though it needs a good bit of deadheading. But look, this one that I thought was going to be blind has started flowering. that lovely so it looks as though we're going to have flowers a good abundance of flowers on here before we get frosts which will be lovely okay leaving it there because it's quite breezy see you again soon bye say bye chickens no, they didn't say bye. Good day. We're at Kew Gardens and this is an area where students at Kew get given a bed to work on during their year. Obviously most of these beds have been emptied because the year has finished but when we last visited this area in September last year with Vivi it was chock-a-block with wonderful veggies there are still you see over there there's still some 
I think those are cucumbers. So there's a couple of beds. This one here. A couple over there. And a couple over there. Hmm. It's really a little visited area, this bit. And it's right next to the vegetable garden and also the bonsai greenhouse. Just have a look in there. I don't think anyone's in there. Look at that. What a fabulous structure. And obviously lots of bonsai as well. And there's Richard down there, look. Well, we're back home now. I picked up these four acorns. They were actually on the tarmac pathway. So they could have been trodden on by people, so I've rescued them from being trodden on. And I'm going to plant them tomorrow in two pots. And who knows, maybe we'll end up with our very own Kew oak trees. I think I might soak them overnight first. Yeah, in fact, I will soak them overnight first. And then tomorrow I will pot them singly into pots. These two were found in a different area of Q than, than these two here. So they may not be the same variety of oak. But they may be. Who knows? Anyway, that's it for today. I will see you again tomorrow. Bye. Good day. I'm in the poly tunnel and it's a sowing and pricking out day today. These are the acorns that we got at Kew yesterday. And these are some lettuce seedlings that I was given by a neighbor. I've used my pricking out tool there to just take out three for the moment. And the acorns are going to be going into these four individual pots. And the lettuce seedlings, which will actually be for the spring, are going into the modules without holes in them. So if I come back, you can see that there's a root on each of the seedlings. And all I'm going to do is make a hole in each module, pop the seedling in there and then bed it in with my fingers to make sure that the roots are all touching soil or compost in this case. So that's what I'm going to get on and do now. These are all now pricked out and popped into modules. And what I'm going to do now is take my acorns, which are here, and literally making sure they're bottom side down. You can see there's the top and there's the bottom. I'm just pushing them into the soil just so that they're slightly below the surface and now I'm going to get some more compost and just cover them slightly. Can you see they're really not that far below the surface? Obviously, naturally, these would fall on the ground, 
and potentially be buried by squirrels. So, yeah, they don't really need too much effort to get going, hopefully. But yeah, I'm just going to put a bit of compost on top. Maybe that will be a centimetre. So these lettuce seedlings will be staying inside the polytunnel. And I may put a cover over them as we get into colder weeks and, and the winter. These, however, I'm going to take outside because they don't need to be inside. It's better that they are outside. But obviously, outside, we get squirrels. And squirrels like acorns. So what I'm going to do is pop them together like this. Let me just get rid of that down there. And then here, I have a metal sieve for soil. It's called a riddle. And I'm just going to put that on top of there in the hope that that will keep the squirrels off. In fact, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do that, but I'm going to swap these around. I'm going to put these into the green. I'm going to put our garlic, which are here, into this one. These are the elephant garlic doesn't quite want to fit. I'll do that in a minute. Elephant garlic corms. I'm going to put those in the middle. Sorry, doing this at an odd angle. And then I'm going to put that on top. Because that, this is now resting on there and squirrels can't get underneath where I realised if I put them in this smaller tray, they could have got underneath. So... There we are. I will keep an eye on these to see when they shoot. I'm down here every couple of days at least. And once they shoot, I will then think of a different way of keeping squirrels off. But I don't think it will be quite so much of an issue once they have some roots and some shoots. Okay, that's it for today. Quite a grey day today but it is coming up to the middle of September no it's not October so that's what we really expect see you again tomorrow bye good day I'm going to be removing the tomatoes and the canes and also putting the red tomato bags or the compost rather from the red tomato bags into a jumbo bag for the time being. I've only got a yellow jumbo bag as you saw me use the other day so I'm going to put the yellow jumbo bag down here and put all of this spent compost from the tomatoes into it and and then what am I going to do? And then I'm going to just rinse the bags because fortunately we can recycle them in our local area. So the plastic bags go for recycling. Really fortunate today. Table and four chairs, one of which is a bit rickety, I'm told, but that's great. I need to think how to prep these for the winter, but at the moment, what I'm going to do is just put them into the shed to keep them dry. So once I've done this, I will put them into the shed. I decided to move these in the shed before I started my work. It made more sense. I don't know why I thought I'd do it later because it gives me more room around here and 
as you can see, I've now removed the bamboo canes that were in there as tomato frames. I also had some of these rebars holding up some of the tomato canes because you may remember earlier in the year they got really wobbly. And now I've put the yellow bag over there. So I'm going to start emptying these red bags into the yellow bag. I've opened each bag just by slicing through the plastic here with a knife. This is what is inside, but obviously these roots, tomato roots, are quite big. So as I empty these into the yellow bag over there, I'm going to take these out and just leave them on the side or take as much root out as I can and leave on the side. If I can't take them out because they're really compacted, like I think that one is, I will just leave them in for the time being. But look, this is why we didn't grow in this bed this year. This is all bindweed roots. We didn't have time to get in here and get those roots out. That's a job for the winter. I'm going to get my wheelbarrow and put these bags into the wheelbarrow, even though it's just a short journey here. These bags are quite heavy. All the grow bags are now up. The ones that I had the squash and the pumpkins in, the butternut squash rather, I'm just leaving here for the minute because they have very little root in them. So they can just go straight onto a bed, most probably onto the broad bean bed when we do that one, or some of it will. You can see there, look at all those roots from the bindweed. What I will do, though not today, is put that vinyl back down. I'm going to be cracking on with this bed, I would have thought, in the next month. So if I put the vinyl down, it will suppress the weeds a little bit. As we know from the unveiling, when we took the vinyl off earlier in the year, it doesn't suppress that much or not that vinyl that we've got because the light does get through. So anything underneath continues growing, but much more slowly. This is all going into our compost heap. These are all the roots from the tomato plants. So there's 72 sets of roots there, all going into our compost bin. And this yellow bag is full. All of these, I know I've talked a lot about white roots recently. I know all of these are tomato roots, which is fine. They'll just decompose down. But it's not going to be in here that long anyway. I've got some cardboard just there that I'm going to put on top. So I don't want this to really get too wet. The flaps either side are actually stitched in, I think. Yeah, I'm not sure I can take those flaps to, to cover it, but that's okay. I'll put the cardboard on top. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'll do. But I'm really happy to have got this job done today. As I say, the vinyl will go on top another day, most probably tomorrow. And that will be job done for, I'm, I think, at least a few weeks, if not a month or so. Yeah, it's still a mess. <laughs> what was the, what the person said? Utter, complete and utter mess. But um, you know what? I'm really happy with this complete and utter mess because I know where I'm going with it. 
I can now start thinking about what width I want this bed to be, how much path I want here, and how much additional growing space I can add at the end of each of these beds. Yeah. I did have, uh, did find one fox, one fox, one frog, which I have rehomed. So hopefully that will be fine. But yeah, that's my job done today. Or oh, I think I might just deadhead those cosmos. Yeah. Right. I will see you again another day. Bye.